We're going to show you how to set up to grind a four flute center cutting ball nose end mill. In this case, we have a 7 inch carbide. We're grinding the primary angle. We've already ground the secondary angle. We ground that at about 25 degrees. It's just a clearance angle, so you just want to make sure you pick up the grinds so that there's clearance behind the cutting edge. Now we're putting the primary on this tool. <coughs> What's substantially different than normal is that we have the motor elevated by three quarters of an inch on our riser. Um, this allows the shape of the wheel to be beneficial when you come around um, when the tool is perpendicular to the wheel. We're also using a dial indicator to index off the tool during the grinding cycle um, when we index to the next flute. So the indicator is a pretty nice way to do this. So here we are. We're, we're a few thousandths off. We're going to index to the next flute and then just bring the Bring the wheel back in to uh, 60 thou in this case on our indicator. We don't have to go all the way around because the wheel might want to take out the cutting edge of the next flute that's in the vertical. It should be nice and quiet when it goes back. Then you move your table away. And then index to the next flute. Bring the wheel back in. Do your 60 thumb mark and then grind it. Move the motor away. take out that the cutting edge on the vertical fluid, which is the reason we have the wheel above center, so the, the shape of the wheel is, is away, instead of being, if, if the tool was higher on the wheel, then you can see that that vertical edge would be hitting up here. So by raising the motor, it took care of that. Coming around here to center, you can just tap it until you get it right where you want it. Just don't take off that other edge. Move the motor away. <clears throat> so what we've done here is we've used a dial indicator once the table was centered this way on the pivot. And then to set this up, you, you, <clears throat> you put your post in. And then you just make sure that the the edge of the wheel and the face of the wheel are at the center of the pivot. And then just move your motor that way, the amount of the radius of the tool. In this case, it was 7 8, so we moved it 437 that way. And that brought us to the outside of the tool, and we start from there. By keeping track of your movements with dial indicators, it takes the guesswork out of it. And that's it.